do so. And I will introduce myself again. Hello everybody, it's Miranda here from Live with Prima. And tonight we're going to be working on the new frameworks, Bird Cages, which is right here. Sometimes you just have projects that are really hard to photograph. Um, I struggle anyway with photographing, but this one kind of gave me some trouble. It's really hard with these, you know, this metal frame here to get the inside captured. So I'll give you an overview really quickly of the outside. Hopefully my camera will zoom in and you can see some of that shimmeriness going on from the Opal Magic paints because they are just beautiful. This frame already comes really distressed and really pretty, so you really don't have to do anything to it. Like I said, this one is on my gallery wall just as is, okay? So they are just beautiful. And, I mean, you can have three different people, like you're going to have three on the show, Sharon's, then mine, then Tiffany's that are, you know, same frame, totally different. So you can really take your own ideas and go to town with them. Okay. So the back does come off. I'm hoping my back still comes out. I don't remember how glue crazy I went here. I may not want to take it off. <laughs> Let me make sure I didn't glue anything too crazy. I should have done this before the show. The only thing I'm seeing is one little flower that got glued. There we go. Okay. One flower had a little bit of glue back in there stuck to the frame. Um, so we will be doing this separately and then just adhering it into the inside of our birdcage. So it's really dimensional and you cannot really, you know, capture all of it on a photograph, but you can definitely see all the details and all the dimension in person. This thing is really layered. I've got lots of foam um, squares going on here. We're going to be using the new Artisan powder, powders, the Art Alchemy paints, but always some of the classic Prima items like the Shabby Chic Treasures and the Art Ingredients, Art Basics, all of that. And we're going to be using the Tales of the Unique Collection. Okay, so this is new. Yep, this is our frame here. And I did add the little birdie down there at the end as like an afterthought, but I totally turned it into a butterfly cage. Okay, so this is what we're doing. Does anybody have any questions so far? Let me read the chat so far. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it definitely does look round. It, it really does. The bird cage is Prima, and the item number is 584887. Um, I'm actually going to be using the tag as one of the embellishments that has the item number on it. So we're going to be covering that up with some pretty paper. So um, if I missed anybody while I was rambling there, I'm very sorry. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Really excited to show you my frame. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. I think we should have no trouble really getting this done in an hour. Um, I'm going to kind of keep this over here where it's in sight, but not in the way. Okay, let me move my mouse pad really quickly, and we're going to get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and do the painting onto my frame, so that way it can be drying while we do the rest of it. So on the back here, you just have the little you know, metal prongs that are very standard with the Prima Ultra Bowls, and you just bend those out of the way. Um, I had one that I, I was bending them way too far, I don't know what I was doing, like instead of just bending them to where I could lift it out. I was bending them all the way up and then all the way back like multiple times. I had one of them break off on me, but that was totally just my error. So when you have it, just make sure you're not, you know, going crazy with the bending. Um, just bend it enough to get it out. So it's a half a bird cage, and this is what you have, okay? So we're going to cover the inside part of this little section on the bottom, and then we're going to cover our back plate. And then the rest, we're just going to go to town decorating with the papers and stuff. And you do get this really cute little bird, and it comes in this little baggie. And I will show you up close. It's really cute. It's just as distressed as the bird cage is. My camera does not like to zoom in to um, really small things. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, but it's a really cute little bird. So even though mine's a butterfly house, it's still... Um, oh my goodness, hold on. My thing is stuck. I'm not seeing any new messages really quickly. Let me get that fixed. I'm still up there at as the, is this a prima bird cage? That was still my message. I'm like, nobody's talking tonight. Okay. Hopefully that just fixed it. Okay. There we go. So what we're going to do first is just cut off the tag here and we're going to add this back on, but we're not going to use this big black um, tie to it. We're going to add some different prima trim. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go on here with a little bit of white crackle paste and I'm going to give it a really light touch because um, 
I don't really want to, you know, have to wait on it to dry basically. So I thought I would do the white crackle paste afterwards, honestly. And you know what? That's what I'm going to do. We're going to save that for last because I didn't go crazy with it. I just added it to a few little areas um, already so it would go ahead and dry a little bit. But it's such a subtle detail and it's really not necessary because it's super distressed as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in with my Art Alchemy paints. And we're going to be using a couple of different ones. The Opal Magic Rose Gold, which is the most beautiful metallic color. Um, it's like a golden pink tone, which is just beautiful. And the item number is 963-620. We're going to be using that on the front of it. We're going to be using a little bit of the new Memory Hardware Artisan Power Powder Power. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I really struggle. But this one's like the brown tone. And then we're going to be using the Art Alchemy Acrylic Paint in the Vintage Rose. And this is another one of the metallic ones. So it has a very um, metal finish to it. So those are the first couple things we're going to do. Um, and I, you don't really have to do much, like I've said. It's so pretty already. So I'm just going to open this up and take one of my new Finnebear paint brushes that I just opened. And you're just going to pounce this powder onto here. Wherever it's kind of already sanded off and that rough metal showing through, that's kind of the areas I just went back onto with this powder. Um, and just kind of accentuated them. And the main place we're going to use this powder is on the frame on the inside to kind of match it up with the outside area. This powder is really, really cool. Um, I don't like getting it wet. I've seen a lot of people do some kind of mixing it with wet um, mediums and for some reason I just like to dry brush it on here. I just feel like I get really good vintage results if I just use the powder with a dry paintbrush. But that's just my personal preference. You can mix this with mediums and color it and do all kinds of really fun things. But if you're just trying to get like a vintage look, I think just dry brushing it on there is a really good way to do that. The powder is <laughs> it's got the power too. Thank you, Robbie. Yes, it does. <laughs> The new Artisan Power. I'm just in love with everything Prima has came out with lately. I mean, this is the best release ever. Talk about getting some creative ideas going. It's just, oh, I'm in heaven. Okay, so I didn't do much. I just pounced a little bit on there. I tend to ruin paint brushes, and I love these tins. Like, I'm almost excited to run out of the powder. So I can alter the metal tin. Isn't that bad? Like, I just want to use my containers. Like the new Gypsy Cord, I'm ready to run out of one of those so I can alter the wooden spools that it comes on. Okay, so I just added a little bit of the metal powder, and you probably cannot even really tell where I added it. It's very subtle, but in person you're definitely going to see this. Um, the camera doesn't show that all so well. Okay, now when we start adding these, though, you definitely will see a difference. Okay. So notice the color of these like distressed areas now. They're super dark, and I just kind of wanted to tone them down a little bit. So that's when I used the Magic um, Opal, Opal Magic Rose Gold. I love the names they came out with. And these paints are just, oh, they're so amazing. Someone said the other day it's such a small container, but it's not like, you know, a chalkboard paint or, you know, an acrylic paint. This is like one of those paints that you just need a tiny amount. They just glide on and they are great for accenting. I usually just wipe my excess off back to the inside and use this little protective cover to kind of go off of. And I usually have more than enough on there to last. I'm going to make sure I don't have any of that powder left on my paintbrush. Yes, it does stay. That's why I love it so much, Carrie. Um, I didn't see you ask that question, but it does stay, and that, that's why I'm so in love with that powder. It really does stay. I mean, I haven't tried to rub it off. Well, I'm rubbing it right now, and it is still staying on there. Like, I, I absolutely love that powder. So I'm going to start going over, especially in the areas where it's been sanded already, um, and I added that artisan powder already, and I'm just kind of going over it just to kind of tone down that dark, rusty color. And I'm being very sporadic with this. I don't want um, to cover the whole thing. And this is also a very subtle touch. But when you have this in any sort of sunlight or, you know, a light in your room, it's going to start reflecting that mica powder, and it's going to look really pretty. So I'm just grabbing some off of my little cap here. 
and adding it in random places on my bird cage. And I have to say, oh, I feel like I say this about a different item every time, but this is like my favorite new Prima product, these art alchemy paints. I really love them. Let me zoom in. Um, honestly, I don't even know how to zoom into the top of the mat without coming in more. How about I prop up, let me grab a box over here and I'll prop my cage up on it. Give me one second, y'all. That way you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better without me being so far away. I'm going to try to prop this up a little higher to the camera for you. Okay, so I'm just going to set this on a cage, on a box, and hopefully y'all can see the cage a little better. Does that help y'all? Let me know if you can see it a little bit better. Um, the zooming feature doesn't really work on this webcam. I'm sure I could figure it out. I'll play with it after the show's over and kind of get more acquainted with it. Usually I have such a huge item I'm altering that I need the extra space. This one's a little smaller than what I usually do, so it's kind of far away from the camera, and I apologize. Okay, let me also make sure my lighting is not causing y'all to not be able to see. Hopefully that will help too. Okay, so I don't know if you can see so far, but just in these areas, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of that shimmery rose gold color. Um, hopefully you can see when I turn it. And now I'm just going to kind of start going into just some of the regular white pieces of metal. Just adding a little bit of color. This is all so subtle, it's kind of hard to see. It's like one of those combination effects. Once you have all the mediums on there, you can kind of see it a little better. But right now it's going to be very subtle. This stuff is so shimmery and beautiful. And I'm using like, oh, I can't even give you a measurement, like a dab of this paint. And it stretches so far. That's what I love about it. Okay, gotcha. Hopefully that worked better. Yeah, I'm sorry if you were seeing my legs and stuff. When I started the Ustream, I didn't have the camera focused on my mat like I usually do. For some reason, I just left it up in the air. So some of the people who were on early got to see my face, which I don't like to show on camera. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one for now. Um, when we get done with everything, you can kind of go in and touch all your flowers and everything up with it. I feel like the light is kind of just widening everything out, but I'm going to keep going and we will see after we get all of our mediums on there if it's catching on the camera or not. And I always add that protective little white um, paper seal back on the inside. I feel like it really helps to preserve the paint and um, keeps it from drying out and keeps your lid from sticking. Hello, Julianne. No worries for being late. I'm glad you're here. Okay, we're going to the Vintage Rose now, and I don't know if I said the item number, but the item number is 963200. And this one, you'll start to see it on the frame a little more than the other one. But when you open it, I usually just take this excess off the lid, just kind of scrape it back down in there, and then that's what I'm going to pull off of. Okay, so this one's a little darker. You will be able to see this one. It's more subtle. I mean, it's not as subtle as the Opal Magic one. Okay. Have you guys been seeing the mini Live with Prima shows? They are so super informative. Carrie linked the one that Tiffany did today on the blog on the Lanties. They are so amazing. I am loving these Lanties. How many of you have got your hands on them? I have two sets of the Salvage District and they just go perfectly with my industrial um, craft room which I am redoing and I cannot wait. I think it um, will go on the blog on the 22nd, but don't quote me on that. But I did a special with lots of the new um, IOD home decor stuff, like the big rub-ons and the roller stamps and everything, and they were so fun to work with, y'all. Um, I'm not typically a home decor like DIYer, but this line has like changed my mind. It was really user friendly, so I'm kind of excited to show you all that. Okay, I'm gonna keep it simple for now, and when we're done and we have all of our embellishments on there, we can always add more paints, okay? So I don't even know if this is gonna come across on here or not, but 
but I'm going to try to hold it up really quickly and get it to zoom. Hopefully you guys can see the shine on there. Um, like the rust spots over here, they became a lot more golden. Hopefully that's showing. It's not so dark now. Okay, and that's all I really wanted to do. So now we're going to go in and we're going to add our paper to the inside bottom and the back panel and start embellishing. I really didn't do a lot of mediums on this. I mean, I did gesso on like the papers and stuff, but I wanted to do a Ustream where I wasn't having to use my heat tool and waiting on everything to dry because I feel like that's what I'm always doing. And I went ahead and cut a little piece to fit because this is a little tricky to do. Um, I guess let me do, let me grab the paper really quickly and show you kind of how I get that little piece there because it is a little tricky. I just take my bird cage and line it up on a piece of paper and where's my pencil pad really quickly. I just trace the whole shape out just like this. And then when I go to cut it, instead of just cutting the line exactly, I kind of go in about half an inch and then cut it out. So that's going to give me pretty much the size that I need for the inside. And then if you distress the edges with your Prima Distress tool, it's going to look okay anyway. And it really doesn't matter if it fits in there perfectly. I'm just trying to get some extra detail and some of this beautiful paper from the Tells of You and Me line. This piece right here is from the A4 pad. I really always love to use the A4 pad. So this is like my baby right here. This is the Tells of You and Me collection in the A4. And the item number is 583743. I did use some of the 12 by 12 papers as well. We will go over those in just a minute. I'm actually going to flip this upside down, y'all. One second. Take these supplies out. That way I have a solid base here. Okay, so I'm going to use the 3D matte gel. This is like my staple. This is my adhesive of choice. I really, really like it. And the item number is 961398. And I'm just going to use it to cover my paper and use it as an adhesive. Okay, I'm using one of the new paint brushes from Finabare that has the, you know, the texture, um, oh goodness, silicone on the end, on the end of it. And I've used those a few times now and they are awesome. So I'm just going to add some 3D matte gel, just a nice thin layer to the inside of this. And it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to fit in here exact and that's okay with me. I mean you could probably take a little more time and make it perfect but for me I'm going to be adding a ton of flowers and stuff in here and it's it's kind of hard to see inside of there um, from certain angles so I really wasn't worried about it. Alright so now I'm going to put it in here and the one thing I do is I kind of push it toward the front and it's going to kind of rise up on these little bars right here and that's okay. I just use my fingernail to kind of like push around it. And try to get it to fit as perfectly as I can. Got a little excess right there. Just peel it right off. My fingernail usually works as a really good um, tool when I'm trying to squeeze things into there. But a bone folder or you know something like that would work really well too. Okay so the bottom of our birdcage is covered now. Just didn't want it to have it just be plain white. Okay so now we're going to do the back panel. And you can see if you didn't cover it with paper, it already is distressed, just like the front of it. So it's really, really beautiful. Let me grab my paper really quickly, and I'm going to show you my favorite one out of the 12 and UNE collection. I'm going to use the 12 by 12 sheet of this. One second, I've got papers everywhere, and I've already cut into it um, because I was doing some butterflies with it. But this paper right here, this particular pattern, is just my favorite. I really, really like it. Um, and the item number is, it's called, oh lord, never mind. I can't, I can't ever pronounce these names, but hopefully you guys can see that. That's the one that it is. And the item number is 990848. I can't pronounce the fancy French terms, but I love the beautiful names that they are given. Okay, and I'm just going to line this up along the bottom and the side edge so I don't waste any paper. And I'm just going to use a regular old mechanic pencil. My screen is going apart in just a second. Okay. And just trace around this. Okay. Pretty simple. 
I've got my guidelines here, and now I'm just going to cut that out. And we're going to distress it with our paper distressor and use the 3D matte gel to get it in there. I thought this project would be really quickly, and now I'm looking at the time, and I'm like, did you underestimate yourself again? Like I always do. But I love this pattern. I think it's really, really pretty. Some of the other patterns, I mean, it's hard to choose a favorite, but some of the other patterns, I'm afraid to cover anything up. Because um, sometimes you'll have like a focal point over here in the paper, and this one's just like all over the same pattern. So I feel like I can kind of add it to projects to alter without covering anything up. Okay, I'm going to go around and make sure it's the right fit, not too big. And it looks to be, check the back, that's usually a good way to do it. Yep. And I'm going to distress it with my pen distress tool. And basically I'm just trying to rough up the edges and shrink it a little bit. I'm not necessarily worrying about get a very good distress. I'm just trying to make it a little bit smaller, basically. Just taking off a little bit of the paper edge. Let me see what you ladies are chatting about over here. I agree, Carrie, because I have tr I've altered regular bird cages and it is so hard to try to like squeeze your fingers in there and you have like this tiny opening. If you get lucky, you get one that opens from the top, but it's still, it's definitely harder to work with one that, you know, is not open backed. So this was really, really fun. I've got four of these so far and one of them is definitely going to stay on my wall there because I'll say it for like the fifth time. It's just beautiful. Like I love it. And I have a couple of bird cages um, hanging in my room already. So it just blends with those perfectly. I love all the Prima Ultra Bowls. I mean, these are amazing. The chandeliers are my favorite. I have three of those hanging up. Um, I just love all the Prima Ultra Bowls. The telephones, the little TV frame, the TVs, the little Ultra Bowl frames are all amazing. I'm putting a really thin coat. I hope y'all can see that. Just enough to get the paper to adhere. I don't want to waste any product, so I'm just trying to use it just like a glue. All right, let me get that off of my hands really quickly. I've always distressed everything. I just love to. When I first started um, scrapbooking, well, it was actually before I had started. I just found like videos on YouTube, and I could not believe what all these ladies were doing. And um, I remember watching a video and like saying to Chris, why do they want their paper to look old? Like if they just bought their paper, why do they want it to look old? I didn't quite get it yet. And then of course, once I started, I was like, aha, uh -huh, yeah, I gotta distress everything. Okay, so this is ready for our embellishments. That was super simple to do. So this would just fit right back on there, just like that. And I mean, you could just leave that plain, and I feel like that's already beautiful. Like that could go on your wall and just be amazing. But we're going to go a little further, of course. Well, a lot further. We're going to use one of the large frames from the Shabby Chic Treasures line. I love this large frame. I actually have them covering my um, electric panels in my scrapbook room, like the plugins. I don't know if that's the right word, electric panels, and it looks so pretty. The item number is 892098. Okay. And we're going to be using the large one. Open it up. Okay, but first we need to give this some character. So I'm going to use my other one as reference to look at and hopefully show y'all what we're trying to achieve. I mainly focused on these ornate edges over here. I'm trying to get the camera to zoom. So we're going to add some more of the artisan powder and some more of those paints just to kind of tie it in with the frame. And I didn't want it to be, you know, stark white. You can see the difference between the two. So we are going to try to give it an antique look and make it blend in with the rest. So I'm taking that dry paintbrush again and going in with the same artisan powder, which if I didn't give the item number, then I'll give it now. It's 991203. And this is the brown type color. So you just kind of pounce it onto these corners here. And I do use it wet here in a second, but I start out using it dry. 
and I'm just focusing on the corners and the sides here where that intricate molded area is. And it's, you can just transform this frame in no time with just using this. I mean, just dry powder and it's already looking really pretty and really vintage. I mean, it doesn't take any time with this powder. I mean, it's just amazing. I love, love, love the Artisan Powder. This brown one's my go-to. I've been using this one on everything. A long time ago, I started using mica powders. Like I think the Prolex powders was the first one I tried, but I just couldn't really get into it. They didn't stick on anything. So with Prima's new releases, I'm really happy. Everything Prima makes is just really good quality. Okay, so just quickly going around my frame, just pouncing some of the powder down into there. You can take your finger and get it wet and rub off like the top part of this and then it would just stick down into the recessed areas and you get this really pretty two-toned look. Um, but I'm just kind of going all over the whole thing. Okay, so you can see there what a difference already we have with just the artisan powder. Super beautiful. I absolutely love this powder. Okay, so I'm going to stick this to the side because we're going to use it wet in a minute. We are talking about Dremels. I love my Dremel too. At one point, I had a full-blown table saw in my craft room. That's how, like, into, like, tools I was. But I convinced Honey to let me take it out to his shop, and I don't have it in here anymore. All right, we're going to go back with the Opal Magic Rose Gold. But the Dremel tool is, like, a must-have. Okay. So I'm going to go off of the lid again. And I'm just going to kind of do the same technique. I'm just going to kind of pounce. It's going to wet that powder and it's going to spread a lot better now because we're giving it some fluid to kind of move it around. So you want to be, I really don't like having brush strokes on things. I'm pretty weird about that. So I like to take a towel and just kind of like pounce on top of it every now and then just to make sure that it just looks vintage and not like, you know, you just recently painted it and you've got all these brush strokes everywhere. So I always keep a little rag um, or a paper towel, a baby wipe handy just to kind of dab up the excess. And you want to make sure you pay attention to the inside corners too normally, but since this is going to be inside of a bird cage and you're really not going to be able to tell, I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm just pouncing every now and then just to kind of take some of the excess off and get some contrast. Just going all the way around my frame like this again. The combination of these two colors is perfect. I love this Opal Magic. So pretty. And I remember at first when I was ordering them online, I was like, why do I need all of these different colors? A lot of them seem very similar, but let me tell you, they are, there's a lot of differences in these colors. These Opal Magics, they might have like the same gold mica, but the color is different, and I'm in love with every single one. I could not pick a favorite. Okay, now I'm going to go in this side. I got a little more powder on, so I'm going to add some more of the wet paint. And I'm going to add a little more artisan powder because I don't want one side to be darker than the other. Safety glasses for sure. Yeah. I should probably wear safety glasses all the time. I'm the world's clumsiest person, so. Probably be a good idea for me. Speaking of safety glasses and like Dremels and everything, if you guys hear saws and banging going on in the background, um, Chris is out there. They're building a camper trailer for his uncle, basically from scratch. I'll have to post some pictures. So I tried to get him to be quiet for the show, but I didn't want to make him sit out there for like an hour, an hour and 30 minutes, not doing anything. So I told him to go ahead and just shut all the doors. So hopefully you won't hear too much, but if you do, that's what it is. Okay, so I am satisfied with that right there. Um, it's a little pinker than my original one, but, you know, that's the beauty of live TV. You can't always get it exactly how you had it. This is going to be hard to show. 
Okay, hopefully y'all can see the difference there. We don't have some plain white frame. This has got a multi-tone to it. It looks golden, it looks brown, it's got a hint of pink, so it just looks really, really pretty. Okay, so we're going to add that right to the center of our back panel. And when you're doing this, you just want to make sure that whatever embellishment you use, that it is still going to fit back onto your um, frame without you know, clogging up the back so you can't get it on there. Okay, I'm going to use just regular hot glue. Um, it's what I used on my original one and it has held up just fine for the last couple of months. So I'm just going to use hot glue and add it all along the back here. Just make sure it's centered on there too. You don't want it to be kind of wonky and crooked. Okay. All right, let me grab one more glue stick. Real quickly. Okay. So on this one, I used a piece of the, let me grab the paper that I on in the collection. There's so many beautiful papers in this collection. It's so hard to pick. Um, I fussy cut a ton of flowers from different pieces of the paper. Butterflies, these butterflies right here, I used this center one, I fussy cut it out. Um, I fussy cut a lot of the floral elements out from all of these. Any paper that has floral elements, I am in heaven because I love to fussy cut them out. Um, where is the paper I'm looking for? Of course, I probably just flipped right by it. Oh, there it is. It's on the back of this one. So at the top here, it's very subtle, but you have these lines, um, kind of like vines with flowers with birds on them. So I fussy cut all those out because I just wanted to add some extra dimension to the frame here. So let me hold my other one up for reference here so I can keep an eye on it. Let me double check and make sure this fits before I embellish it any further because I would hate to have it off and it fits perfectly. Okay, so we are good to embellish. All right, so I'm going to grab those little pieces that I fussy cut out, and they just look like this. Um, my one tip for fussy cutting something like this out would be to, let me see, let me show you the image again really quickly. I take my Prima X-Acto knife, and I cut out all of these inside elements first before I fussy cut out the outside. Because if you fussy cut the outside first, it gets really flimsy in there and I feel like it starts tearing. So that would be my only tip for these is to fussy is to use your little um, craft knife on the inside first. And then use your scissors or the craft knife, whatever you use, to get the outside. But the first time I did it, I cut the outside first and it got really flimsy on me. So I'm just going to play around with my placement here. These vines I feel like are so pretty. And I'm just going to kind of play around with adding them on there. And one of these I cut, I'm trying to look and see, I think it was, it's hard to remember which way I had this. I think this one went up here, like that. And I cut off a little bit here, just basically trying to stretch all these vines out so that they kind of cover up a bigger area. I'm going to tuck this one over here, and then to get a little closer to the camera here. Oh, I love fussy cutting. I love to fussy cut. It is like one of my favorite things to do. Um, I nanny, so when the kids are at swim practice, I usually sit over to the side and do my fussy cutting. And it's I find it really like therapeutic. I don't know. Um, I've seen some people do some amazing fussy cutting that I could never have the patience to do, but I can do things like this okay. So I'm kind of holding it up here at the bottom and just cutting off what I feel like is not going to show or it's going to kind of overlap what I have going on. And I'm just cutting that away. And we're going to find somewhere else for it to go because I don't want to waste it, okay? So I hate to cover up any of our beautiful frame, but we're going to. And I'm going to use some foam dots. Let me grab those really quickly to prop this up with. And I'm only going to add a couple in 
a few areas because it's too skinny to really add to the whole thing. I'm just going to focus on a few little areas. But yeah, I love to fussy cut. It's just so fun to me. Some people like to do it and some people just hate it and will not do it. Um, Joanne Bain, she's on our design team, she does these layouts where like it's very simplistic and it's like got one cluster and it's like all these fussy cut details and it amazes me and I was inspired today. I was like, I've got to try a layout in that style. Maybe that would be my encouragement to do more layouts because I really struggle with them. So all you ladies who do amazing layouts, I salute you because I am definitely not one of them. Okay, so we're going to kind of tuck this in here and then we're going to do this top one. And then we're going to add some fussy cut florals before we add anything else. Because these papers have so many beautiful, beautiful images of flowers. It's, it would be a shame not to cut them out. I mean, I have to. I mean, I do altered art primarily, so I pretty much have to fussy cut. If I did layouts, I would probably be less inclined to. Okay, just adding a few of these on here. And my voice is so raspy tonight. After keeping seven kids all day and like swim practice and everything with them, my voice tends to get a little droopy by the time I get home. So I apologize. I don't know if y'all hear that, but they are definitely using the chainsaw now. Chris is breaking the rules he's gonna pay. And I do add a little bit of hot glue here and there. Um, just to make sure it stays. I'm a hot glue fan. I know it's like a huge debate like whether to use or whether not to use, but I like it. If I'm gifting something out, I don't use hot glue. Okay, now I'm going to grab a few of the floral elements. Let me show you that really quickly. So I just kind of add some accents to the frame. Um, just some cool dimension on there. Just add some movement and some spirals. I do flip it over and I'm going to cut off any of the pieces that are coming over the side too much. I mean you can have a little bit of a edge to them but they just cannot be overlapping in a huge way because your frame's not going to close. So that should be good. The rest I can kind of tuck down in there and they should be okay. All right, let me grab a few floral elements that I have fussy cut out. That's one of my favorite parts of the paper is all the beautiful florals. I mean, look at these. They are just gorgeous. Let me grab the one that I cut at swimming today. It's so pretty. I mean, these are just gorgeous. The floral elements to this paper really make it. I'm going to use the Shabby Tote Chalk Edger really quickly just to kind of ink these up. This is a very neutral color to ink your fussy cutting edges with, so it's perfect. Um, it's not like a dark brown or anything. It's just basically going to get rid of that white, clean cut edge that you tend to get when you fussy cut, which I just can't stand. So I always ink my edges. I inked these ahead of time, by the way. Scout's Honor, I did. Okay, so I'm going to add a few of these in here. We can kind of cover up some of our lines that we just did. It's all about layering different things. In fact, I might have some coming out of there. That's perfect. And then have some coming up there. Okay, so I'm going to keep it right there and I'm going to add a few of the larger size foam pieces. These are like my savior. I love these. Okay, add that there. And you do want to make sure your paint is dry before you do that. The good thing about these are alchemy paints is they dry super quick because they're not a typical, you know, paint. They're really silky. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you have them, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I added two right there, just that way I could get some extra dimension on that part. And once I have them down, I typically take either my fingers or like the end of a paintbrush and curl up like leafy areas just to get added dimension, kind of roll them with my fingers. That way there's just really more dimension to it um, and it looks more like a real flower. I always poke my leaves up. Okay, so we're just going to add a few more floral elements in there like that. 
I, I've forgotten to do my edges a few times, but I feel like if I do it all at once, um, I kind of have a bin full of, for every paper collection, I have a bin full of fussy cut elements. So I usually try to do it all at once. That way I don't forget. It definitely makes a difference. I've had a lot of people ask me before, why don't my edges, you know, why does my fussy cutting look so bad? Um, and A, it never looks bad, I feel like, but I think inking definitely helps. And especially with like a shabby tote or I guess the antique linen, I think it's called. Those are very um, subtle. I'm going to go ahead and use this one too. I'll have the rest to the side. It definitely helps. <laughs> We're going to use Prima flowers too. <laughs> I like to do a combination. So we use the Prima flowers and we're going to use um, some fussy cut ones. So I kind of did a combination on this one. All right, I'm going to just find a good way to kind of tuck that one in there. Why do I have an alarm going off at 9-11 at night? I don't know. Okay, let me get more of my foam pieces. I'm going to add one back there, and I'm going to add one more piece to the bottom, and then I will make the rest of you ladies happy and use the actual coordinating flowers to the collection. They are so gorgeous, too. Okay, I'm going to add one more. Actually, I didn't add one more, but I kind of want this little guy to show, so let me play around with it, and I'm going to add it there. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's really hard to create something exactly the same. Okay, so that's it for the fussy cutting, I think, I hope. Okay, so that's what we have so far. And the frame, you know, it does get lost a little bit with all the details. So, I mean, you skip this step if you really don't want to do the fussy cutting. It's not imperative. You can add, you know, the regular matching flowers, and you're good to go. Okay, I think at this point we're just going to add our butterflies, and then we're going to seal it up and work on the outside. Now the only like non-prima item I used on these were the was the butterfly dies that I used, and these were the spellbinders one. Um, it was a big set of different size dies for butterflies, but they all coordinate. So I used them on my scrap pieces of paper. Um, let me grab the 12 by 12 sheets that I used. I always save all of my scraps. I used this one right here, which is just one big floral print, and then on the back are the different elements that you can fussy cut out. So I usually, like those were the butterflies, so I'll keep this section over here and use that to fussy cut, I mean to die cut on. So the item number is 990817, and I also used this one, which was 990831. So I used a mixture of 12 by 12 and the A4 paper pad. Okay, so what I do is there is a center area for this butterfly, so I'm gonna kinda keep that there and just fold each wing in half, keeping that center area so I can add some foam dots to it and we can get some extra dimension here. So this is the first one we're gonna add and you can see I kept that center area really folded. And I'm gonna use a paintbrush. I didn't wet it or anything, which I typically do, um, but I just curled it with my paintbrush just to give it some added dimension. Welcome back, Elaine. I really appreciate everybody for being here tonight. Okay, let me move these little ones out of the way, and we are going to add this right to the center of our cluster. And we're going to need about three foam dots on the back of this to really get this to stand up because we've got a lot of dimension already going on. But that's what makes it extra interesting, I feel like. Okay, so I'm just adding three of these stacked on top of each other, and they are not neatly stacked at all. And I'm finding a hole in there right in the center and pushing down really tightly. Okay, and then I'm just going to make sure I fold it back up in on itself, just like that. So we've got our first little butterfly in the center of the frame there. Just make sure you get it centered for the most part. Okay. <laughs> it makes you tired. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. This one is just one 
plain piece of paper, like no intricate detail. And then this one nests in it and it's got a lot more um, detail to it. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it up and then I'm going to add more foam dots to the back of it. And I'm only going to add one layer this time. And I'm going to use the smaller ones, two of those. I never used to use foam dots, but I got lazy and caved and started using them. I used to try to recycle and use like cardboard pieces and stuff, but I hate to say I got lazier and started using them, but they really just save so much time. Okay, so we're going to add that one right on top, and I just like to really keep them dimensional and kind of fluff them out a little bit. And we're going to add one more to the center, so all of these are like made to fit perfectly and on each other. And this one has a really small area to adhere, so I'm going to fold it, but then I'm going to use glue to adhere that one in there. Did y'all hear the, oh my goodness, yes, if you guys heard the noise on my iPad, that's hilarious. Yes, I play a game called Hey Day, and I'm like totally addicted to it. Um, Chris calls me like Junior Farmer, it's pretty funny. But I can't control the notifications, and let me tell you, they come at like the most inconvenient times. It will like moo when my cows need milking, and it's so embarrassing that y'all heard it. But my iPad is sitting right over there. Um, but it'll be like pitch quiet. I'll be like in the courthouse, you know, doing something really important and it'll like moo or oink or just make some really embarrassing noise and everybody looks at me <laughs> I'm like burying my head. But yeah, that's what that was. Okay, so we have our last butterfly on there and that is going to be it for the inside minus one little embellishment. So you can see all the dimension we have. So I know you may not like fussy cutting, but it definitely helps you add dimension. Okay, so I'm going to add, let me look at the item number really quickly. I have it over here to the side. These little metal floaches, floats, I don't know how to say it. Ugh. But these little bad boys that are from a past memory hardware um, release, I just love these so much. These are going to be a staple for forever. Um, but the item number is 990312, and we are just going to add it down to the, let me turn this the right way, the left corner. And let me see about where I added it. You know what, we're going to add the frame first just to make sure we don't add it in the wrong area. So that is what we have. There's a ton going on on the inside. Um, you can't see all of it when it's closed, but if you have this in person and you do this project, you're going to be able to see every single detail. It's just really hard to convey on camera sometimes what all you have going on okay I did something wonky here because it's not wanting to fit so let me flip this over and make sure I've got this right there we go okay and then you're just going to close your little prongs and back up on there just like that it's so easy Prima makes it so easy to alter things and then boom done I mean that could be it right there so I just I love how easy they make things so I'm going to go ahead and add my little, if you didn't have that back to take off, you would be doing this entire thing, trying to like squeeze your little tiny hands down in there, and it's so impossible to do. So I, for one, am really grateful that it is so easy to do. Let me try to prop that up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to add this little cloak, cloak, please don't make fun of me if I'm totally saying that wrong, down here on the bottom. Okay. And again, we're covering up some of our details, but that's the name of the game. It's all about adding more embellishments and getting it to where you're happy. you got to be happy with it. Okay, so I just added that right over there in the corner, and it's, it's just really, you know, subtle. You can't even really see it sometimes, but it's there. Okay, I'm going to move that out of the way and look at the front of my frame. So now we're going to start having some fun with some sprays and some flowers. The main central part of my flower unit is this spray here, which is an older one from Prima, but I feel like it's a classic. It's the Providence one, and this one is, I think, Clove. Let me look and make sure. Because there was a couple of different ones. Yep, and the item number is 578268. I love this spray right here. It's just super beautiful, just script print on um, like an antique looking paper. Okay. So let me cut down this into two pieces. I'm going to cut this bottom section into one piece and use the top section as another one. Okay, 
I love Prima sprays. They did come out with new sprays finally. I know it was like very much requested to them. I think we all love the sprays. So these are beautiful and I love that you can just stretch them out. So this is going to be our top part because it has this really long stem to it that we can kind of wind up around here and kind of go to town with. Um, let me turn it my way really quickly just so I can get my placement down. Okay, it's really hard to work upside down, but I'm trying to keep it to where y'all can see what I'm doing at all times, okay? So I'm going to add, let's see here, there we go, a little spray right to the side here. And I can play with the leaves after I've got it done and move them around how I want. But for now, I'm just going to add like one little bead of blue, kind of bending it too so it will fit the form of this um, birdhouse. Okay, I'm going to add one little drop of glue for now. And the reason why is because once we start adding our flowers, we're going to be putting adhesive on the back of them. And as they rest on top of the spray, they really start anchoring it down. So you don't need to add a ton of glue to the spray. I want to be able to still move it around. And if you're not happy with it, you can move it and it's going to be okay. All right, so it's just going to rest right down the side of our bird cage. I'm going to kind of move some of the leaves up. Turn it all the way really quickly. I'm just going to kind of play with some of the leaves. Move them around. Just draping down the side basically. And I'm going to move this away really quickly so I can show you the top. And all I did was the top is I just kind of used my fingers and I went in and just curved it around the already existing loop up here but I kind of spiral it inward just really loosely with your fingers and just kind of made a little curly do here. So nothing perfect at all, but I just wanted it to kind of match the circle up here. So you get this little spiral going on with the stem and this is glued over to the side. Okay, we're going to break out our gorgeous flowers now. So we're going to be using a couple of different packs. We're going to be using the collection flowers from Tells of You and Me. These are so incredibly beautiful. The item number is 586362. So I'm going to go ahead and open those. These are so incredibly beautiful. I mean, look at the shape of these blooms. They are absolutely gorgeous. So, so pretty. So we're going to be using those. And then we're also going to be using the other set from Tells of You and Me. These are kind of very similar, if not the same, as like the Isabella flowers from the last release. Um, but they are for every collection. And these are probably my favorite shaped flowers Prima's ever came out with. I'm so in love with them. Um, the item number is 586317. Okay, so we're going to use both of these sets. Let me see what all we use. We're going to use one big one. I'll try not to pour them all out so I don't have a huge, ginormous mess to clean at the end. But, okay, I'm going to pull out the flowers that we need to use, put the rest to the side. Okay, so let's move some of this out the way. Okay, hopefully, y'all can see my spray going down the side here. We are going to add our first flower, which is going to be this beautiful pink one. And it has a glitter to it, and you can actually see that on the camera. It is very glittery, um, but it's not like a normal glitter. It's like a sheer glitter, so I actually like it. And I did that off camera so everybody didn't scream at me. I peeled the um, leaves off the back of it last time everybody was getting mad at me. So they're like, stop killing the flowers, but I just don't like the backs to them. It's a personal preference. When I glue these flowers, I'm just being mindful that I don't glue the edge of the back of my frame because you won't be able to open it. Kind of like at the beginning of the show, I had glued one flower to the edge of it and it had stopped the whole thing basically from moving. Okay, so now we're going to use this beautiful flower here and it looks like it just has the script from one of the pages in the line on it. We're just going to kind of tuck in that just right there. We're just kind of tucking these into each other. And these don't come with the greenery on the back, which makes me very happy. So somebody doesn't like the greenery too, because they came like that. So Carrie, you can't get mad at me. Okay, so I've got two flowers going so far. And we're basically just filling in this whole area with flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and add this beautiful 
peachy pinky undertone flower here. And let me make sure I'm doing this how it was on there. I'm trying to do it exactly the same, which is pretty hard to do. I'm going to turn it my way for one minute, y'all, and I promise I'll turn it right back. So I've been doing it um, backwards, and i got to get my leaves lined up. Okay, we are good now. All right, now we're going to add this one right here. I just needed to move some of the leaves. They were a little out of shape. Okay, so I'm adding just a drop of hot glue on the edge there, just pushing it down into the center. Okay, and that is it for the flowers on this side. Now we're going to go in with some more die-cut butterfly embellishments. We're going to use one more of the die-cut ones, which is this one right here. And I just die cut it out of that same paper. Actually, hold on, that one looks too dark. I think I die cut two of them. Let me look really quickly. Um, it does, there it is. Okay, thought that one was too dark. I used that same paper we lined the inside with, the bottom and the backing. And we are just going to add that right here, kind of to the side. So we're just going to add it right there. It's going to kind of touch this leaf a little bit and go under that flower right there. Okay, so we're going to glue it right there. I'm trying to keep this to where y'all can see it and it's a little hard to um, work that way. But I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing as I do it. So I just put a little bit of hot glue, just a very small amount. I'm going to use the end of the silicone brush to kind of tuck it into there. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to wait for it to dry, and then I am going to fluff up the edges with the end of a paintbrush. Let me get this 3D matte gel up really quickly before it dries on my beautiful new Finnevere paintbrush. Cannot have that happen. Okay. And then we're going to add one of our Fussy Cut Butterflies, which to me, this butterfly right here is the prettiest one from the collection. It is so ornate. It's got these really long drops on it, and it's just beautiful. So we're going to add that one right to the center of this one. Okay, so I'm going to add a tiny drop of glue to it and just tuck it right in to the center section of that butterfly. And then once that dries, which that's what I love about hot glue is it does dry very quickly, you can really fluff that up and get a really pretty dimension to it. So that's what we have so far. We're going to add some chain and a tag, but we're going to skip that for now and keep going with the flowers. So for now, we're going to start adding some flowers over here on this side. I'm going to put it back on the box so it's a little closer for y'all and you can see what I'm doing. We're going to just add a little spread here on the corner. So the first thing we're going to do is get the spray here. And I'm just going to kind of make it a little shorter once again filling off a couple of things to make it shorter. Okay. You can always tuck those leaves back in at another time. You don't have to keep them all on there at one time. So these sprays are great for, you know, fitting any project you want it to, basically. Okay, so I'm just going to curve it right along the bottom here, get my shape going on, and we are just going to glue it right there. Let me check my other one and make sure I'm not doing anything differently. Yep, just like that. Okay, so I'm going to add just one little bead of hot glue here. Because like I said, when we start adding our flowers, it will anchor it in place. And the little stem that you are going to be able to see here momentarily will be covered up with one of the sticker embellishments from the A4 collection from the paper pad. So I'm just letting the glue dry and then you can start playing with your leaves and getting them into the shape you want. That's what I really love about these sprays is the wire in them and you can really manipulate these to fit how you want it to. Okay, so just added it right there on the bottom. Very easy to do. Now I'm going to start adding some more of these beautiful flowers. I'm going to go in with one of these large one's from the Tales of You and Me line, and I am going to take the back off. So sorry, y'all. And we are just going to add it right kind of coming out of the cage, kind of inside and outside of the cage. 
just like that. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue back there. And let it dry. Just kind of push down on the center part. Oh, I would love to see your large cupcake, Elaine. That would be amazing. I would love to do a large cupcake. It makes really good birthday gifts for people. I have found that people just love to get those. Okay, I'm going to add this next flower right here. And I'm going to kind of overlap my little pretty pink one. But most of it will still show through. So I'm just going to kind of add this one right here to the corner. And a lot of times I'll kind of spread my back layer of petals and kind of go into the frame that way. And it really helps me out. So I'm going to place that one just like that. And I'm going to turn it my way while I glue it just to make sure I get it how I wanted it to go. I'm really pushing it to the inside of the frame because I kind of want this coming in and out of the frame. Okay, so we've got two flowers so far. And that white one is getting covered up, but it's okay. We are going to set the bird on top of this one, so it is more important. We need to have a surface for our shabby chic little bird to go there. Okay, I'm going to start adding a few to the inside. That way it just looks nice and filled out. Um, no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just adding some of these gorgeous collection flowers to the inside of our bird cage. So I just added the purple. Do you see how hard it gets to see in there? That's the problem with photographing it, is it gets really hard to see in there. I mean, I can see it plain as day in person, but it's really hard to see. Okay, I'm going to go with the largest flower that we have in the collection. I'm going to kind of tuck it in through here really quickly. And then I'm going to push it down and add a tiny bit of glue. And then I can turn it back y'all's way. And I'll usually use like a the end of a mechanical pencil or something just to kind of go in there and push it down into the glue and make it stay. Because once you have the um, back of this on, it does get really hard to decorate. Like Carrie said in the beginning, it gets really hard. Okay, so I'm just adding that in there and keeping pressure on it until that glue dries. Okay, got it. And I think that was it except one more little baby pink flower. <laughs> Let me find it. Okay, we're going to use one more of these. Fill in the back off. And we're just going to add it right over here to the back of that. And that's going to be our last beautiful flower. So for those of you who do not like to fussy cut, definitely getting your hands on the collection flowers. Um, they are just amazingly beautiful. And then after you get it done, you can really move your little, my favorite part of sprays are these little spiral arms. So I kind of love to play with, you know, those kind of poking out. But you can play with your leaves and really get things to form how you want. Okay. So we're going to add our little birdie here that comes with it. Even though this is a butterfly house, I did want to add the bird to it. So we're just going to kind of have it resting on top of one of these flowers. Let me see. I'm going to turn it my way one more time just to kind of see where it's going to go. And this little bird is heavy, so definitely I don't recommend using hot glue for this. If you want to use like a um, the matte gel or the heavy body gel something that's really going to hold up because this little birdie is heavy. It's made of metal too, so it's heavy. Okay, so we're just putting it on there just like that. Okay, so that is basically it. All we have left to do are just a few fine details to it, but the bulk of this is done. The rest is all just being a perfectionist and adding a few more things here and there. Okay, so let me move some things out of the way. One thing I did do was take the actual tag for the frameworks. Um, I hate to waste, and this is such a cute little tag. So I'm going to take my A4 pad here and find a sheet of paper that I like. And let's see here. In the back, you get this really heavy-duty carry. Maybe you can explain this better. It's not like 
I guess it is a cardstock, but it just it feels different. It's really cool. I already used the butterfly one. It was right here out of this section, so I might use this pretty little flower piece. Nope, we're going to go with the note piece, okay? So I'm going to use my 3D matte gel again. Let me find my paintbrush. And I'll put it in some water so I didn't ruin it. I cannot stand to ruin my good Finabear paintbrushes. I used to just be so careless with my paintbrushes, but not anymore. So I'm just going to cover the front part of it. And I left the barcode part on the back just for future reference for myself. In case I ever needed to say what the item number was, but of course you should cover both sides of the paper if you don't need to do that. But I'm only going to cover one for now. And I'm just adding the 3D matte gel. And I am just going to, oops, sorry, I totally did that off camera. I am very sorry, y'all. I'm just adding the 3D matte gel right on there. And I'm going to go and just line this up as best I can on the bottom of this, making sure where it says note. I'm going to cover, um, I want this part that says note to cover the tag. So I'm just lining it up and then I'm going to flip it over and then really push down and get that matte gel to adhere. I'm going to use a towel to kind of push down on it and get any of the excess away because I did use a lot. And then we're just going to cut it out and adhere it to the side. And that's it. Okay. So I'm just lining it up on the edge and then cutting right around it. Okay, and look how cute that is. I probably could have done a better job lining it up, but it says note on there and it's just adorable. On the other one, I used a um, butterfly. You could add a butterfly to the center of the tag anything you want to do, but the good thing about these A4 collections is they do have a lot of really cool elements in the back that I'm not typically used to getting with A4 collections. It's really nice. Okay, let me add my little hole for my string. And I'm just going to poke through with my mechanical pencil because I'm just going to add some regular twine here. Well, if I could get it to go through, let me grab my Prima fractal. This one's super sharp because I just Took it out of the packaging. There we go. I usually just kind of twist it and make a little hole. You could use your crocodile with that. It was such a tiny hole. I really didn't want to waste it. Cut the excess off there. Okay. And now we're just going to attach this to the side over here. And what I did is I used the chain. I used the coat. Oh goodness, I can't pronounce it. It's like the coat D is the word chain. It's 990701 from the Memory Hardware Collection. I used the last that I had of that one, and it's really pretty and antique. It's got like larger circles and smaller ones, but I don't have any more of that, unfortunately. So I'm going to use the smaller version of his chain. Um, Frank's got a bunch of this beautiful memory hardware chain. So I'm just going to grab one little piece of the regular chain. I really wish I had some more of the other chains, but I definitely like the um, style of it better. This one works just as good. And I am just going to adhere this through my hole. And I guarantee you, because I'm on live TV, it's not going to work. So that's just the way it works for me usually. So you know what? We're going to just be super speedy. And I'm just going to adhere it like this for now, just to give you guys the idea. And I can fix it off camera. So I'm just going to use the chain to adhere my tag over here, and I'm just going to cut a length enough to give it like a little bit of loopage going in and out of the flowers and really kind of um, make it look pretty. Drape it down across the side over here. So I'm going to find where I want my little tag to hang kind of behind this flower, this um, leaf over here, just like that. And then I'm just going to randomly lift up petals of these beautiful flowers and put a tiny dot of glue and just push the chain up in there. And it just creates these really pretty overlapping areas of chain. You can kind of make little um, drapes like that coming down. Once I'm all done, it'll show up a lot more. Let's see here. 
I'm going to add a little piece to the back of this so it'll drape over that leaf just like that. This chain is really lightweight, the one I'm using right here. The one I used on the original project is a lot heavier. And then I just let some dangle over the side and that was it. So we've got our little tag hanging over on the side now and I did not line that one up very well but that's just the way it happens on live TV. And we've just got all this chain kind of draping off the side and it's got movement to it but it's um it's glued so it's not going to go anywhere okay. So that's the last part there and then all we have to do is add our little sticker. Now on this one I added this piece right here that says this moment and I don't think I have that one anymore because I only have one more of the A4 pads but I'm going to see what other stickers we have back here to work with. So you get these pieces right here which are super fun for like planners and mini albums and tabs. I mean they're awesome and that's where I got the um, you are special one, but we're going to use you are adorable. It's the same exact size, same style, and that's the one we're going to use. And it's already adhesive, so you don't have to do much to it. I'm just going to kind of bend it a little bit, and then it just adheres right onto. I'm going to cut an edge off of this spray because I got a little too much going on there. And then we're just going to add this on the front. And it sticks pretty well on its own, but I do go in and add hot glue to it as well. So I'm just kind of pushing with my finger until it gets really tacky on there. Okay, so it's going to look like that for now. But once you add your glue and everything, it'll really stick to those edges. Let me go ahead and add glue because it is just not cooperating with me kind of hard to show you what I'm talking about when it won't stay still. These little stickers and the A4 pad make me so happy because I feel like stickers and like chipboard sheets are something that are usually reserved for people who get the 12 by 12 pads, um, the collection kits. So it's really nice to have all those extra items in the A4 pad. Makes me very happy. Okay, there we go. So that is it, you guys. All I did afterwards, which takes quite a bit of time, was add some perfect pearls, just little pearl dots, um, around the edge of this sticker and around the edge there. And that is all that I did. Um, so this is what we came up with. Hope you guys can see it is easy to, to achieve. I went over by 11 minutes, but I don't feel like that's bad for an altered project, I guess I should say. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and I'll put both of them in range so you can see they do have subtle differences but very much so the same. If anybody has any questions, I am now looking at the chat so I can help answer them. Let's see here. Thank you very much, Robbie. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you, Lenine and Deb, everybody. Okay, so of course the first one I did over here is a little more detailed. I mean, you have more time to sit and fuss with it. Of course it's going to turn out, you know. I always go the wrong way on here. It's so funny. Um, so this was the first one we did, and though this one's without the perfect pearls. I feel like the perfect pearls definitely help the sticker at the bottom to blend in, but it's very easy to do, y'all, and you can skip all the fussy cutting. <clears throat> okay. Any questions? Let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Julianne. I really appreciate that. Thank you, ladies. I have to say, after seeing like what Sharon did with hers and Tiffany's, which is, oh, I don't even know if she's shown it yet, but it is brilliant. It kind of makes you doubt yourself. But these, you guys have to get your hands on these and just do your own thing and have fun with them. They're so fun. They're so quick and easy. The backs come off, which is half the battle, so definitely get your hands on these. Okay, let's see here. I don't see any questions, so I think we are good to go. Who, can anybody pronounce that word? <laughs> cloach, is that correct? I hope to say that's right. Cloach, it's a cloach. I actually do, you know what, I'm behind on a couple packages right now, but when I get caught up, there is no need for me to keep the extra project I make on Ustream, so I definitely plan on gifting them out. And I have, the, like, one left over from every show I've done since I've been on. So, 
the bird cage a thon yeah, Robbie did one too. Oh, I can't wait to see your Miss Robbie. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm like already picturing something in my head. I guarantee you it's got like microbees and beautiful glitters and stuff on it. Oh, I love your work, Robbie. Such amazing gals. Okay, I'm going to hit stop record really quickly. Sorry that it was kind of hard to see. I'm going to work on fussing with my um, webcam and the zooming features because it was kind of hard to prop it up. So I apologize for that. And I really appreciate everyone for coming out. I'm going to do stop recording.